yeah, it's it's a I love it, man. Love this guitar. And then I put all the uh, all these things on it. I, I like Grant because uh, I love Grant because uh, he was an alcoholic and he's a and he was a president. And he was told everybody what the fuck to do and he kicked the rebels' asses. So I, that's why I got him on her. A girl in Germany gave me this. She's like, I want you to make me famous. And she's like, So you put you have to you put this on your guitar. And she said and showed the world my t my uh, my. Uh, you know her designs, and I, 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 and I couldn't remember who the hell she was. The next, I forgot, <laughs> and she, I didn't keep in touch with her. And then, you know, I don't, I don't carry it. I don't have a cell phone, so I don't know. You know, I'm, I, I like it that way. My family's in, in horror. They, they, they look at me in horror of not having a cell phone, much less a car. You know, they're like fucking. They're like, damn, dude. Yeah, I'm, I said, yeah, you know, it's me. I don't. <laughs> That was my thing. I want. I, I, I idolized Walter Cronkite, and I wanted to be like him. <laughs> that was my. That was my main thing. And then I got into. Uh, and then I. Uh, and then I. Uh, I love cars too. I like. You know. I put together. I love. I had like hundreds of models, and and I. Uh, and I wanted to get into. Uh, they had a metal shop, and they had a uh, mechanical thing there, and the, my my art my enemy was in there, and, and if he wasn't in there. His last name was Horner, and it, it kind of reminds me. It reminds me of that book, uh, the or that um, what the what's that famous book, Catcher in the Rye. He was like my bully. He would beat my ass all the fucking time, call me a girl, and sit and shit. So my curriculum would have been that. So I had the, my extra thing. So I ended up in junior course. So I, I so I was in junior course, and it was it was just me and all of the girls. So they were he would so he was every time he would fuck with me, they would try to they would take up for me and shit. And then I decided I was going to play football. So I, I, I went to Loudoun County and played for the Raiders. So I got on the fucking football team. So I, then I sent, then all, all these, and then Horner, he left me alone after I got on the football team because I had all these buddies and everything. And so anyway, I met this, this girl and, uh, and uh, she was a, 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 in Students for a Democratic Society Against the War. She turned me on to Bobby Seale and Abby Hoffman and all that stuff. And she was telling me how violent football was. And so, and then she gave me this book. Right over the middle, it is Junker at the 10, five. And there, a guy was on the St. Louis Cardinals. They wrote a book about how violent football was. And I had I had a scholarship to go to Stony Brook. I was a defensive end. I had a touchdown. Nobody else had a touchdown. Matter of fact, I think we only got three touchdowns the whole year. So anyway, uh, so I quit the football team, and I, uh, and I, uh, you know, and I was really. And then it, we ended up, me and her got in a fight and she broke up with me. And so, so, then I was, uh, I, she was my first girlfriend and I, I kind of like, I was just totally devastated. So then my goal was I wanted to go to, I wanted to go to Vietnam. That's, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted, to, and I, and I got into this, they had the, the things in school where you could get into the, you know, that, so I got into that and decided I was going to do that. And I went to take the test, uh, the test for that. And I had flat feet. So I, so then I couldn't get in, and so that I was just totally devastated. So I said, "Well, fuck it, I'm just going to be a drug addict, man." <laughs> so that's it. I just drank and I ran away from the children's home, and ever since then, that's what I've done. A if you look at that again, yeah. you'll see that this right here. 
it's like the mouth of a cave and this is the inside of the cave and that's the outside if you look at it see right there it's like the door it's like these like little stone hinged stones and that and that's an inside of my mind all this stuff is like it, it like that's my mind inside my mind but it's like a, it's like a trick I, I use um, um, like markers like cheap markers and then I uh, most of the time I, I laminate the art so that makes it really cool uh, there's a lot of um, uh, artists that hate that because they they feel like it's it's kind of wrong to do that why I don't know because you can throw it on the fucking floor you can take it in the fucking shower you can wash it off it makes sense to me I met Terry when I was um, like 18 years old I was trying to get a job at the little grill here in Harrisonburg and he had some art up at the grill and I just saw that and blew me that didn't blow me away I mean it blew me away but it was just like what is that you know I haven't seen anything like that usually you have an artist you know somebody like Picasso you know he's working in different mediums you know but it's all kind of in the visual art realm it's like with Terry you know he's he's an artist and you know he's making poetry he's making visual art he's you know making music and all different kinds of each one of those things and he's just so spread out with his expression that's that's kind of what sustains his existence I think friend is that picture over there uh, that's that's me <laughs> my friend he, he ends up dying but he, he we were the blacks run goats and we, we were the punk band around here and and then there's Calvin he's in the wheelchair he was uh he was so uh, we let him in and Rick would tease him mercilessly that's how Rick was Rick was a good dude though but he would tease Calvin all the time call him a dumber <laughs> says you can't you're not a drummer you're just a dumber <laughs> then Rick ended up and it ended up dying he died and uh, he was murdered, and then um, after that, Calvin, uh, so I, I separated ways with Calvin, and he kept trying to get in touch with me, man, so I finally, I was just trying to stay away from him. I, I got involved with the Little Grill. Ron Copeland hired me at the Little Grill, and I had the stipulation that if I didn't drink, I had a job. So I, so I took the job, and I uh, managed not to drink. So anyway, I finally, it, it turned over into a collective. I told him, I said, Ron, I'm not going to those meetings anymore, man, because you're not the owner now. So I, I, I said, I got, I got the two books. I got the 12 step works if you work it. I know how to read. So I'll look them up. And if I, if I have any problems, I'll just go into that fucking book, you know, and I've got them here. I'll be okay. So I, so then I immediately started drinking again. I love dishwashing it. So when it became a collective, I, I just wanted to be a dishwasher. I'm the mental dishwasher. I'm on top of the two percent. I'm the mental dishwasher. I'm on top of the two percent. Well, now the waitresses call me daddy. Just cause me heaven sin It's a dishwasher
could play by myself pretty easy and you know get up there and entertain a crowd but I had had this longing after Rick died man I just wanted to get in another band but I really didn't really like I didn't want to play a lot, a lot of covers with I wanted to create stuff and and I didn't really think I could find anybody you know that that I could could do it with it was uh probably uh, 2004 I guess maybe and uh, he he'd been looking checking my art out and he'd been looking, he wanted to know who did it and he came in and met me and then he ended up getting a job where I was working at. I was thinking, I wonder if he wants to have a band, he likes my art. Yeah, he'll never, he, he wouldn't want to be in a band with me. And I'm like, uh, so I thought about it for like, it, I probably took a week, spent a week thinking about it, pondering it, how I would say it to him. So I went up to him and and his, it, it, when I told him, it was like, it's like somebody, it's like he had an electric cord connected to his face and like it just like it's like his face became a son man it's like i you know i listened to music i was an avid listener and had an interest in bands and stuff but i didn't know that i could do anything terry wanted to start a band and he was like i'll just get a drum machine and you can do that stuff and then i'll play guitar and sing and i was like well i got the theorem and i can add that you know he's like okay we can do that and our first practice was like four hours long, and we probably did like 25 songs. I mean, did did songs. I would just find the beat on the on the drum machine, like that was on the drum machine, and play that. And Terry would, you know, shuffle along to it. I mean, it was, but that was kind of a work ethic that that has always stuck. Like we've always hit it pretty hard. Hey, get me a seltzer water. We were trying to come up with band names. So, he, so he, he, he was coming up to me with all these names and we would look them up and we would look the fucking names up and somebody had it. And I'm like, nope, 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 nope. Here's his story and I'll tell you mine. And one day I came to him with one and, I, and he was back in the dish room washing dishes and he eats off of the plates, you know, and he washes, he like eats pancakes and shit when he's washing dishes. And so he, I go back there with one and he just turns around and goes like, Mother! and I'm like, Hell yeah, dude, my cooter, that's what's up, man. And I just like kind of trailed off. He said I was eating some soup and crackers or something, and he, and he came up to me and, uh, and he said a name. He said something to me. Uh, I was in a bad mood, and I said, uh, he, I said, fuck you to him. I said, fuck you, but I had crackers in my mouth. He's like, but cooter, that's it. I'm like, dude, no, no, I don't, I don't want that name, man. Dude, no. And then I thought about it, and I was like, he just said, fuck you. That's, that's the name. That's really what happened. It really is, like, the more I think about it, like, that's the way, like, if you, if you were eating a pancake and you said, fuck you, and you were like, and it was like kind of coming out of your mouth, that's what, that was, Buck Gooder would sound like that. Now, my story is that Buck Dharma is my favorite guitarist, though, and, uh, and then, um, you know, and then, then we have the sci-fi element, but it's a little goofy, so Gooder, Gooder, and I thought, nobody's got the name Gooder, you know. You know, his story's probably right. Loudoun County Library. That's your yearbook, bud. Oh, shit. I'm not... Remember even... these? Uh... I have to Mike read. Lindsay. I'd have to read the fucking names. I don't know. You? Where? In the back? No, that's you. <laughs> that's you. <laughs> that's you. Oh my gosh. Eighth graders. No Moxley. There he is, there's dude Moxley. Dude Moxley, oh my god. god you said like I made it up, dude. I told you. I remember oh my memory. god. My fucking memory, man. We that guy's buddies. name is Dude we were Moxley. Buddies. We were buddies. Dude Moxley. That's from 19, hey Joey, that's from 1968 eight, or nine. Eight. Shoot. Oh, it goes on B4. That's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to check this stuff out. Make sure they don't shrink. That's what I'm saying. That can't make anything else shrink, though. No more shrinking. Well, it was still, you'll still have this reading. They don't pull 
anybody's influence into their artistic pursuits. They just go directly after what they want to do and the sound that they want to make and how they want it to feel and how they want it to be performed and then that's exactly what they do. Stop the drums! is Bakuda therapy whenever I go to the show because it just, it completely rejuvenates me and it feels like I'm getting cleansed basically. You know, being in a town like Harrisonburg for guys like that that are making this really experimental music, you know, it's it's not easy because there's just not a market that's large enough to fully appreciate music like that. And that's what's so cool. Like, you know, they go out into the world and they tour constantly and they'll do shows to just you know, huge amounts of people they played with. Henry Rollins featured them on his radio show a bunch of times and, and literally said that they were the only real punk band that was left in the United States. I mean, it's, it's just crazy to think that people like that are conscious of the fact that Buck Gooder exists, which is awesome. And it's because they tour. This is a time when you're sure not to see him. Again? There's no 63-year-old guy touring regularly the shitty fucking circuit that we tour. That's, that's just a given. That doesn't happen. But Terry, you know, it's like, Terry doesn't care. It's like, that's, that's where we can play. That's where we can go. That's what we can do, you know? Like, that's what we've got. That's all we've got. What's that? Do you know the order when we're playing? We're playing last. Yeah, we got it. Terry! Mentally, he's not 63. He's like 25 at the oldest. Like, he, his mind works in the same way that I feel like it probably worked when he was very young because he hasn't given up any sort of will to, to make art. You know, it's a folk expression. It's like what we have, this is what we do. And we try to do it as much as we can. You know, it's like our thing. I mean, like, you know, we have conversations all the time and I'm like, nothing that happens to us is gonna stop us from getting together once a week and laying it out in the basement. Stupid. Don't 
intoxicated, and I'm not going to be like that tomorrow, I don't think. You know, I just met her. I mean, I mean, I haven't, she's never been in my life. My mom was a really good Christian and all that stuff, but I, so I wanted to write something for her that, you know, I'm not, I don't embrace what she believes or anything like that, but I wanted to, but it's called Sweet Solitude. Okay. <laughs> is this all there is, one lonely grave? I wish there were future plans to be made. Gone your reflection from life's shattered mirror. I was just getting to know you, Mom, now you're not here. Is this all there is, a name on a stone, and marinated sadness? I weep here alone. So this is the way that things conclude. May you rest in peace forever in sweet solitude. So I wrote it for my mother. Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> I already did Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath for you, didn't I? I'll do it again. I don't want to touch the star. Then I wouldn't do it. But so it's, you know, that's the thing about Terry. It's like he pulls in people because he has such a unique access with the kind of person that he is and with the kind of art that he makes and with the way that he puts himself out there. I think people respond to him in, in just a completely different way and at a completely different level. All art, I feel like, is, is translation. His ability to translate everything that's happened in his entire life, that's what makes it obvious when you see it, but you can't put your finger on it, you can't reproduce it. Everything that's impacted his life up to that moment that makes that even possible. Because we all have struggles and we've all had problems in our past, and so I think what he's doing kind of transcends through the music to the people in the crowd and helps with whatever they might be dealing with at the time. With Terry, it's always been like, that guy is doing his thing, and he's gonna keep doing that no matter what, you know? The fact that he's like definitely not a follower. Like, there's nothing that pulls that dude in any direction other than the direction that he's already going. That's what's kind of exciting still, is to think, you know, what's Terry Turtle gonna be doing when he's 73, and 83, and 93, and because he's Terry Turtle, I feel like 103, like, that is his thing. That's his gift to the world. And it's a great gift, and we're lucky to have it. <laughs> That's not enough of that. <laughs>